Uh, let me say hello to my friends in the American Jewish community, and thank you for allowing me to say a few words to the AJC Global Forum. As many of you know, I am Jewish and very proud of my heritage. My father emigrated from Poland to the United States at the age of 17 to escape the poverty and widespread anti-Semitism in his home country. Those in his family who remained in Poland after Hitler came to power were murdered by the Nazis. Anti-Semitism is not some abstract idea to me. It is very personal. It destroyed a good part of my family. And more recently, I had the sad opportunity to discuss the horror of anti-Semitism when I met with the rabbi at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, where 11 people were murdered in cold blood by a sick anti-Semitic individual. I know that many Jewish Americans and Jews all over the world have in one way or another been impacted by anti-Semitism. And that is why I so strongly believe that Jews who have been victims of discrimination for centuries must help lead the effort in fighting back against hatred and racism whenever and wherever we see it. On this, there can be no disagreement. And let me now say a word about Israel. As someone who believes absolutely and unequivocally in Israel's right to exist in peace and security, who as a young man lived in Israel for a number of months, as someone who is deeply concerned about the global rise of anti-Semitism, we must say loudly and clearly that to oppose the reactionary policies of Prime Minister Netanyahu does not make anyone anti-Israel. Let me say it again. I am vigorously opposed to the reactionary, racist, and authoritarian policies of Donald Trump. That does not make me anti-American, and I am not anti-Israel because I oppose Netanyahu's policies. My friends, the issues that we are dealing with in the Middle East and around the world are enormously complicated. There are heroes and villains on all sides, and no one has any simple or magical answer. Real solutions will require a great deal of hard work, but what I do know is that the United States of America should lead the world with a foreign policy which emphasizes the need to bring nations together, which focuses on diplomacy and international cooperation, on democracy and human rights, rather than a foreign policy that emphasizes the continued use of military force. When I look at the Middle East, for example, I see Israel making enormous technological advances with the capacity to serve as an engine of innovation and prosperity for the entire region yet unable to achieve this goal because of its unresolved conflict with the Palestinians. And I see a Palestinian people crushed underneath a military occupation now over a half century old, creating a daily reality of pain, humiliation, and resentment. Let me be clear. I do not know how peace can be achieved in that region when in the Gaza Strip, poverty is rampant. 53% of the people are unemployed. The number of unemployed is even higher for young people, and 99% of the residents cannot leave that area. That is not a sustainable situation. Ending that occupation and enabling the Palestinians to have independence and self-determination in a sovereign, independent, economically viable state of their own is in the best interest of the United States, Israel, Palestinians, and the entire region. It is a necessary step in ensuring that Israel is accepted and integrated into a region that it has so much to offer. We should now downplay the political challenges of reaching a solution, and I am more than aware that there is enough blame to go around on all sides. While the peace process will be very difficult, agreements are possible if there is a serious willingness to sit down and talk and compromise. The truth is that the parameters of a solution are well known. They are based in international law, they are based in multiple United Nations Security Council resolutions, and they are supported by an overwhelmingly international consensus. Two states, based on the 1967 lines, with Jerusalem as the capital of both states. Unfortunately, Prime Minister Netanyahu and his allies seem to be preparing for a future in which Israel controls the entire territory between the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River in perpetuity, and the Palestinians received limited autonomy within a disconnected series of communities. That is not an acceptable outcome for anyone who supports the security, freedom, and self-determination of both peoples, as I strongly do. Let me close by saying this. 
all over the world, including the United States. We are seeing the rise of intolerant authoritarian political leaders who are attacking the very foundations of democratic societies. We see political leaders who exploit people's fears by amplifying resentments, stoking intolerance, and fanning ethnic and racial hatreds among those who are struggling. We see this very clearly in our own country. It is coming from the highest level of our government. Instead of using their leadership positions to bring people together around their common humanity and work together to resolve difficult global crises, these demagogues try to divide us up by our religion, by the color of our skin, by the country we came from, by our gender or our sexual orientation. I believe we can do better. I believe we must do better. As history reminds us time and time again, the antidote to hatred, division, and resentment is to bring people together around a shared vision of equality and prosperity, of creating societies that work for all and not just the few. And while we look at today's world with great concern, I am absolutely convinced that the future will belong not to those who practice bigotry and hatred, but to those of us who believe in peace and justice and are willing to fight for those values. And based on our history, no one should be more active in that struggle than the Jewish people. Thank you very much.